Okay, so we move to our next speaker, Jun Franciao from EPFL, who will sort of build up on what uh, Valerio said and will show you how you can use this SCM method that is implemented in uh, Vanier 90, use these ideas which shown to you by Valerio on project abilities and fittings and extracting uh, optimal uh, parameters for SDM and how all of this is embedded into AIDA to deliver a sort of high throughput automated when uh, Thank you. So thanks a lot, Jun Feng, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Antimo. So hello, everyone. I'm Jun Feng Chiao from EPFL. So today I'm going to talk about AIDA, which is a computational infrastructure for automated workflows and data provenance. So I guess you have a rough feeling of the SCDM linearization procedure. So we have to start from the self-consistent, non-self-consistent, all these steps to the final maximum localized one-year functions. So in each step, we have to manually edit the input files to look at all the output files to make sure the calculations are running smoothly. And even more, if I change the structure, I need to redo everything. So this is looks like a bit cumbersome. So what if we have a tool that can automatically generate inputs from a user provided structure, an arbitrary structure, and the tool can submit pw.x and all these executables to the local machine or a remote HPC cluster. Even more, if it can recover from errors, either due to some hardware issue or some uh, non-optimal parameters. And also if the tool can track and query all the inputs and outputs. So we have a full reproducibility of all our calculations and either for data management. If we have this tool, we can save a lot of human labor and uh, save a lot of time to do research. So AIDA is the tool to come to rescue. So AIDA is, is automated in, interactive in the infrastructure and database for computational science. So essentially it is a computational science infrastructure for high throughput, high throughput workflows with full data provenance. So AIDA itself is written in Python, it's easier to use and it's MIT licensed is fully open source, uh, on, open source on GitHub. So everyone can have a look at the source code and do the pull request and uh, make it better. So the main feature of AIDA is its scalable workflow engine, meaning that you can submit from several calculations to hundreds of calculations simultaneously. Also it has built-in support for high performance computing. So it can, it can handle the SSH connection, upload the files and also download the files from remote cluster. Moreover, it can automatically generate the full data provenance to make sure your calculations are reproducible even after several years. It also has this flexible plugin system so that you can easily integrate third-party codes into your AIDA ecosystem. So in short, AIDA is a tool to reduce human labor for running single workflow and most importantly, is particularly suitable for high throughput calculations. So before we start using AIDA, I'd like to clarify a bit the concept behind all the, this software. So suppose we, have, suppose we have a simple calculation. So if we want to fully reproduce the calculation, we have to first store the calculation itself and store all its input and all the generated outputs. Moreover, we have to store the interconnection between these entities. So if we, have, if we reuse the calculations, these intermediate calculations, we have this directed graph. So for example, if we start from a structure, we run some self-consistent calculation. We can also run some relaxed calculation to have this relaxed structure. And we can compare the distance between the original structure and the relaxed structure. So we can see the volume changes. Also, we can run self-consistent calculation of the relaxed structure. So with these several calculations, these <clears throat> nodes are becoming a network. It's a directed graph. And the, this network will grow quickly in complexity, even for some simple workflows. So for example, for this molecular dynamic study of lithium in solid electrolyte, it might be, it might be 
simple as you might thought, but actually, if you want to fully reproduce the uh, all your calculation, you have to store a rather complex network. So even for larger databases like this, these are uh, thousands of calculations, you see the AIDA provenance is quite complex. So for, for a network of this scale, it's very, much, it's very difficult for human brain to remember everything. So that's why we need a tool like AIDA to fully generate the provenance graph. So how does AIDA automatically generate this provenance graph? So, so in AIDA, we track the provenance since the data creation. So instead of simple Python type like a integer five, we use AIDA type called this AIDA.ORIM.INT. So it's, it seems might be a little bit complex, but essentially by using AIDA type, the AIDA itself can automatically track the provenance of the data. So for example, when we pass this int five as an input to the calculation, the AIDA will automatically track the input and track its generated output. So that's why AIDA can automatically generate the provenance graph. So this might be a still a little bit uh, abstract. So now we can start with some practical code to understand a bit more about the provenance tracking. So suppose we want to calculate this three plus four times five. So this is quite simple. If we do this in Python, although this is not a straightforward way to do this, but if we use function to calculate this, we can define three functions. The first, first is this addition and then this multiplication, and then this add multiply calls these two functions and return its results. So we have this add multiply function to do the calculation and get the final value. So in AIDA, we use these Python decorators before these functions. So this add calc function essentially turns this simple Python function into a AIDA calc function. So with this AIDA cal function on the right, you can find the AIDA can automatically track the provenance. So we have this orm.int, this five, this is the AIDA type. So when, when we pass this AIDA type to this work function, it can call this cal function and to generate all the provenance until the final output. So Essentially, you only add, you only need to add this add cal function, add work function. So to turn your ordinary Python function into the AIDA cal function. So you have this uh, automated provenance tracking almost for free. So for a more complex case, you can use this Python class. You, you can create your subclass from this AIDA provided work chain essentially define a function in this define function you define the inputs of your work chain and you write the write down the procedure of your calculation for example starting from the setting up the some initial values and then you validate these inputs <coughs> and if you have some relaxation settings then you do the relaxation if not you just skip this and then you can run a seek pass to generate the primitive cell and also run the self-consistent calculation and then band calculation and also finally output all the results. So it's, it's essentially models all your manually calculation steps. So for a more complex case, for example, we want to calculate the band structure. So we start from this crystal structure and launch an AIDA workflow. So it will automatically generate this provenance graph and then we get a final band structure. So this AIDA automatic, automatically generated provenance graph enables us to reproduce a specific calculation. It's like a log of what happened in the past. Well, for the AIDA workflow engine, this is a flexible Python interface to encode our complex scientific steps, like, like, like I showed before the work chain, the work chain class. And moreover, the work, workflow engine provides some robustness against SSH connection drops and also allows to easily implement error handlers for some common errors like end of war time. Also, it has this additional bonus that uh, it can automatically track the provenance 
to ensure fully reproducible. So let's take quantum espresso as an example. We have this AIDA quantum espresso plugged in. So on the left, this is a relaxation workflow. So we start from a crystal structure, we run the sig pass. So sig pass is a tool to reduce your conventional sound to a primitive sound and to find the standard K pass for the band structure calculation. So after the sig pass run, we can run a quantum espresso relaxation. If it is not converged, we can adapt its input and prepare a restart. Well, if it is converged, we run another sig pass to find the primitive cell and also generate the band structure k point pass. And finally, we run a self consistent calculation to get the self consistent charge density. So, this is all this step I implemented in a PW Relax workchain in the AIDA quantum espresso plugin. We also have this PW Bands workchain to automatically calculate the band structure and also this pH base blockchain to calculate phonome properties. So actually it's very easy to wrap any executable into a corresponding AIDA workflow. So apart from AIDA quantum espresso, we can also implement various kinds of plugins for the calculation for the data, the parser, the transport scheduler and workflow and also importer and exporter. So for now we have, so the latest number is like uh, near 80, so we have near 80 AIDA plugin packages to handle, to integrate different codes into AIDA ecosystem. So as you can see from this figure, we are now, the number of AIDA packages, plugins is steadily increasing with respect to time. So we're building up a community of contributors to integrate various codes like Quantum Espresso, WASP, or uh, full all electron codes like uh, Win to take. So also thanks to the abstraction of the AIDA, we now have a common workflow interface. So you can only need, you only need to change several lines of Python, and then, then you can submit calculations to calculate the equation of states using different kinds of codes. So you can compare the results between various flavors of DIT and uh, know the know their accuracy. So in short, AIDA is an infrastructure for high throughput calculation. It has this main feature of workflow automation. The user can define complex workflows with advanced error handling. And also AIDA provide an automated, robust, and scalable engine to run the workflows. Also, AIDA help us to manage our data and to automatically generate the provenance so it's stored data are interoperable and queryable, and also it ensures fully reproducibility by storing the provenance graph. So a little, a little bit behind the scene. So as a user, we have three ways to in, interact with AIDA. We can either use this interactive IPython shell or use this Verdi command line interface, or you can write Python script to submit your workflow. As a plugin developer, you can write AIDA plugins for quantum espressos, for WASP, for all kinds of codes. And AIDA itself provides the rest of the stuff. It has this AIDA daemon to manage your submitted workflow and to submit your workflow into the remote cluster. It has this storage that it stores your nodes, your relationship into this uh, database. SQL database, and also it stores your input and output file into a file repository. So once you have finished your calculation with AIDA and you are satisfied with your results, you maybe you want to share your data with others. So in AIDA, you can directly export your AIDA database and import it on a different computer, or you can share your database onto this materials cloud, this online platform. So for each submission to materials cloud, it has this designated uh, permanent DOI. So you can easily cite your submission. Also, if you, you, if you are using AIDA to calculate your, uh, to generate a database, there's a direct link that you can link, link this materials cloud, materials cloud webpage into the AIDA provenance graph. 
Also, if you are not using an EDA, you can directly submit your input and output, and it is guaranteed to be stored for at least 10 years after your submission. So for example, for this uh, material in this in the paper, you can, from this band structure, you can click this AIDA icon, and then this will lead you to the provenance graph. So here we have this, uh, a, a small video clip to show you the power of this provenance. So we start from this band structure, and we can find its parent quantum espresso calculation, and we can find all its input and outputs. So for example, here, you can find this input file. And here, this is the output file. And also, we can find its input structure and visualize the crystal structure and also download the crystal structure. So this materials cloud provides a platform for you to share your data. So as summary, so there are two core infrastructures. So the first is this AIDA. It's like an operating system to manage and to automate and store your simulations and results. Well, this materials cloud, this, this open science then dissemination portal and cloud simulation platform. So AIDA is like the, the Git to manage your source code. Well, this materials cloud is like GitHub for you to share your code repository, but this is for our computational material science community. So that's uh, this gentle introduction to AIDA. So I'm very happy to take any question. Okay, so there was a question on the chat, but I think Giovanni already answered that in full detail. Yes, confirm. Um, so I guess we can take questions from participants here in presence. Please, again, raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Okay, any other questions uh, on Zoom or on Matrix? Let me see. Uh, maybe just Giovanni. Hi. Uh, there's just one comment. I don't know if people there can read the, the question on Zoom. So I don't know if, it, if there are no more questions. I'm I'm happy to maybe read it again and uh, comment again. That's up to you. No, there there was just a question from uh, Andre about the difference between the calc function and word function. Maybe you can read loud what you answered. So that's fine. Uh, it's okay, Junfeng. If I if I go ahead. Yeah, so this is the answer from Giovanni. The, the cal function, the work function, both are simple wrappers around Python functions to make them automatically tracked by AIDA in the provenance graph. The difference is that the first one is the calculation, the second is the work function, is a workflow. So this is clear difference in AIDA. Calculations can generate new data. This typically wrap external executables such as quantum espresso when you're 90. Well, workflows are just orchestrators. They cannot generate new data, but they can call other sub workflows or calculations and return rather than create data generated by other calculations that we call. I guess it's better we have some uh, concrete examples in the next hour so we can better understand these concepts. Okay, so. Um, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Please, go. if you could just come here, or for me, just give me the microphone. I go there, so it's just a stay there. The microphone comes to you. <laughs> Um, I was just wondering if there is any user-friendly uh, debugging procedure because there's so many steps that are intricate with one another. So if there's something, for instance, let's say if we are wineerizing um, entangled bands and we chose the wrong parameters for the SD, yeah, the um, yeah. matrix, is there any way to easily go back to the code, correct it, and track the changes? 
Yeah, of course you can you can go to any calculation that is submitted by the AIDA engine to your remote cluster. You can go to the uh, the scratch folder to look at all the generated input and output to debug your calculation. Yeah. Actually, means I can. Please, Giovanni, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's so easy to set up an instance, for instance, that one can also use, you know, develop something into a workflow. And once you're done, you throw away all the database, or, you know, when you develop, you can just create a sandbox. And once, you, once it's done, you, you, know, you throw away all the uh, all the graphs are generated just for, for developers. So that's also something in mind. Yeah, maybe one additional comment. So is that it? I fully agree with what both Antti and Junfeng said. Mm -hmm. One more thing is that Junfeng explained that AIDA automatically tracks all the inputs and all the outputs or calculations. So it's very easy to go to a workflow you submitted. You can look at a graph of everything which was called or the sub workflow in the calculation. So if you submit one uh, two quantum espresso, one PW2A9, two one ninety, you can go to that one. And there is a functionality called report, which tells you all the information that if there are any messages, warnings with the calculation. And you can either go directly to the supercomputer, as Jun Feng said, or you can you can directly ask Aida, can you show me the input? Can you show me the output of the code? Either the raw one, the file you are used to look at the text files, or uh, the parsed one. So all this information is there. And if you share with collaborators, everything will be there. And if you put the materials cloud, everybody can check it. OK, any other questions? If not, I think we can stop the recording to begin with. Yeah.